Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and I am excited because we are going to start building this quadcopter, the Budget Basher 5-inch FPV drone racing freestyle quadcopter. And as you can see, we have all of the parts here. Well, not all of the parts, but the major components here. Uh, so make sure you get all your parts together. We've got our camera, our flight controller, ESC PDB stack, our VTX antenna, our receiver, our VTX, one, two, three, four motors, and our frame, which is uh, gonna be the Hecate 230 for this build. So get all your components together. Let's head on over to our workspace and get started. And also I wanna note that to build this, you will need to know how to solder. So if you don't have no clue what soldering is, go check out my video on how to solder. And uh, there are tons of other great soldering tutorial videos out there. So go learn how to solder and then come back. It's really not that hard. And then we are gonna get started on this build. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our frame together because our frame is like our skeleton for our quadcopter. So first of all, this is the bottom plate. This is the top plate. This is like a little bracing plate. And these are the four arms. And then what you're gonna need for this first step is uh, the four of the longest screws in that come in this kit. And then four slightly shorter screws. So the shorter one is on my left hand and you're gonna need four of those, and you're gonna need four of these little shiny things. And uh, and we're not actually gonna build this frame the way that it was technically designed, because that's just kinda of how I roll. So we can take our top plate and we can just set that aside for now. We don't need that for quite a while. So we're gonna take our uh, bottom plate here, and uh, this, let's see, let's do, this is forward. This is forward, this is where our camera's gonna go. And this side is backwards. This is like where our antennas are gonna be. And we have this bracing plate. And we want to line up the bracing plate so that the curves follow each other. They match up right here. You see that right there, they match up. And then what we're gonna do, and we'll do this one arm at a time, we are going to match up an arm here. Now notice on these arms, see how they, they have these little these little, uh, these little nubs, these little points, these are gonna point forwards and backwards. So instead of, they're not gonna point like to the side, they're gonna point forwards and backwards. So here, for example, let's put the front, I guess this will be, well, we're kind of building this upside down. So this will sort of be like the front left actually. In any case, we want this nub to point this way, kind of in a forward sort of direction. We're going to match it up kind of like that. So that is kind of how it's gonna be. And then what we'll do is we'll take our shorter screw here and we're going to put it through this far, the outside hole here. So you can see you're sticking through there and then it's gonna go into this large hole. And then what we're gonna do is take one of these little shiny things, this little guy right here, and we're gonna thread it on to this screw. It can be a little tricky, but maybe you can get it started with, with your fingers. There we go, so it's connected. And you'll kind of see that it'll sort of sit down, it'll sort of sit down in that hole. And it has little teeth and so it'll bite. So this is actually like a self, uh, not self-locking, but it's a, it's a self-gripping nut, I guess. So then you get your uh, driver here. I really love this one. This is from Harbor Freight. It's super cheap, but it is actually really fantastic. It comes with a bunch of different tips. But anyway, uh, let's, so let's tighten this down just a little bit, not, you know, just snug. And we wanna try and, you know, just make sure that this this little shiny piece here, this little nut piece gets centered in the hole, nice and flat, just like that. Okay, so now let's put the rest of these arms in. We're not actually gonna need to put this inside screw in. That's where these longer screws are gonna go, but we'll do that once we're ready to attach the flight controller. So first let's put the rest of these arms in and we're gonna do it pretty much the same kind of way. These are gonna be a lot easier. So we're gonna have the pointy part point backwards and kind of line up the holes. It's a little tricky sometimes. We're gonna take our short screw and put it through there. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna hold it in place. We're gonna get a little shiny, shiny nut thing. And we're going to just tighten that on just with my fingers, I'm gonna try and get it started. It's very small. There we go. 
So you can see that when I tighten this, it will, it sits flat like that. And when I tighten it down, it will kind of grip in there. And let's see, so it's not quite sitting all the way flat. So let's kind of loosen it up and wiggle it around a little bit. Maybe kind of press it in if we need to, to get it to kind of, we want it to sit as flat as possible. But do what you can. The main thing is you want it to be attached, of course. And so here we go. So our arms, we've got two arms already. We're going to put these other arms on in the, exactly the same way. And when you're done, it should look something like this. Well, it should look pretty much exactly like this. So I've just tightened these down a little bit so that they are still uh, movable, but they're, they're snug. Now we are ready to use our long screws here, and we are going to go from the bottom of our frame here, and we're going to put the screws through these inner uh, these inner these four inner holes here so they will stick up and into or upward from the bottom protruding into the, uh, the 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 bottom plate here this bottom plate and that my friends is where our flight controller is gonna go so uh, let's put the rest of them in here and then we'll be ready to attach our flight controller ESC stack and you might need to kind of move stuff around, might need to loosen some stuff, you might need to do a little, little bit of jiggling, a little bit of dancing. And uh, I don't know, maybe if it's a little too tight, you might need to kind of maybe just thread the screws a little bit. I mean, thread, thread the screws through just to get them to go through. So there we go. We have these protruding right here. Now let's get our flight controller stack, our Mamba, and put it on here. By the way, you might look at this and say, Adam, you just took it out of the case, but there's solder on it. How does that work? Well, that's because I had this thing, you know, put together, as you have seen in the previous videos. Um, and so there's there's solder on there because I had attached everything. But don't worry, we're going to cover how to attach everything and how to solder it and all that good stuff. Now, okay, here's an important thing. First of all, make sure your standoffs are tight. Now, these are plastic standoffs, so don't go cranking down the screws on these guys um, because they will strip out, and then and then you'll be sad, and then you'll need to find some new standoffs. So pay attention to this little arrow right here in the middle of the board. That is forward. That is forward, my friends. And this guy right here is actually, this is where we're going to solder our uh, XT60 connector to go to our battery. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to uh, tighten these down just little by little. Actually, you know what, let me do this. I know I had these sticking through in the first place, but now I'm kind of second, I'm like, mm, that probably doesn't make sense. So let me back these all off a little bit and uh, and, and that'll be, make it easier to get, to get our flight controller on there. Because then we can just tighten them one at a time. There we go, okay. so. So this is the forward direction of our quadcopter. That's where our camera is going to go. We're going to take this guy and just line up the threads and just thread him in there. Nice and easy. It doesn't have to be tight. We just want it a little bit. So now we have room to move around. Let's tighten down this one. Just nice and easy. You don't want to uh, you don't want to cross thread these. So if it feels like it's kind of hard to turn and you're not all the way in to the screw, then then back it out and try it again, and uh, and don't don't tighten them down too much. So here we go. So first we're just gonna get them all in there, and uh, and and kind of kind of snug. And then you know because we want to make sure that they're all even, you know. And we're just gonna snug it down. Just I'm just using my fingers. Just using my two my two fingers here. Well, my thumb and my pointer finger, I guess, and to tighten these down because I really don't want. I don't want to over tighten them, okay? And you can periodically, you know, when you're flying, you can per period well, not when you're flying, but after you've flown for a while, you can periodically come through and check all these screws and make sure everything's tight. Um, or you could put maybe maybe like some sort of Loctite or just just a dab of, I don't know, hot glue or something if you want. So we're just gonna tighten them just a little bit at a time, and you know, snug, but not we're not cranking down on them, okay? because they are plastic, so we want snug, but we're not cranking down. Boom, there we go. And once we have our flight controller on and it's nice and tight, then we can go back and just uh, tighten down these other screws. And these ones you can you can do much tighter because they're threading into this 
it's aluminum. I assume it's aluminum uh, nut there. So we'll go ahead and tighten the arm screws. Again, you don't want to strip anything out, but these can be these can be much tighter. These can be nice and uh, nice and snug. Now we're ready to uh, move on to the motors. We're not going to build anything else onto the frame right now. We're just going to move on to the motors and get those soldered up. Now we're going to attach the motors. The motors, le motors, as they say in nowhere. So these uh, these motors they come with um, screws, and these screws are actually a little bit the the size for the driver is a little bit larger. It's actually a 2.5 millimeter. So we're going to switch drivers here, and unfortunately, my uh, my motors only came with these short screws, which which uh, makes me a little sad. So uh, these are the ones that I have. So I, I'm not able to do. Uh, full uh, soft motor, soft motor mounting, which is uh, if you're wondering what soft motor mounting is, uh, go look it up and also check out this video um, that I, where I show you how I soft mount my motors and I got rid of uh, Jello in my flight uh, footage. Anyway, so we're just going to hard mount <clears throat> the motors in this particular case. Uh, but if you have longer screws, as there should be longer screws, but mine did not come with them. Um, definitely use longer screws and you can soft mount your motors in any case we're gonna use hard mounting and look if uh, if you're just getting started you will not notice the difference I absolutely guarantee you you will not notice the difference between a soft mounted motor and uh, and just hard mounting and hard mounting just means we're gonna we're just gonna mount the motor directly to our frame so let's actually do that we're gonna mount the motor directly to the frame here using these screws and so we'll just put a screw right through here and let me get my driver here and with this naked bottom motor and these that just that just means there's there's it's 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 like exposed on the bottom naked it's really easy to see wh how, how to get the the screw in there so that's really nice and to make sure that it won't uh, cross thread what you can do is actually rotate it in the opposite direction till you feel the thread click in place and then we can rotate it in our normal direction, just like that. Beautiful. And uh, all of these motors are essentially identical, so it does not matter which which one goes where. <clears throat> some motors, but I, I think I think we're kind of moving away from that with newer motors. But some some motors, uh, the threads are actually threaded clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the direction for it to spin. But that's that's not that's not really a that's not a big deal and the that's not what these motors are they're all threaded the same way so we'll put the screw into that one we don't want it too tight we just want it nice and snug uh it's kind of snug right now we want to get all of them in first before we really start tightening anything down get our last one in there and really once i show you how to do this one we'll just jump to uh after all of them are done because they are all the same they're all done in the same way. So, so we're going to tighten them kind of a crisscross sort of pattern. Tighten them down, get them nice and snugly buggly. And you can see we're kind of we are um centered up right down there. Want to make sure you can see that we're centered up there. And uh this well this motor actually there's enough room so that little clip in there is free to is free to spin anyway. But we want to make sure that it's spinning and uh, there's there's no it's not rubbing any of the frame or anything like that. So we're going to tighten these down pretty good. We're, you don't need to go gorilla cranking on them, but uh, but we do want them nice and tight. So <clears throat> once they are snug, just like that. Okay, we're good to go. So I am going to attach the rest of the motors. And then uh, I'll meet you back here, and then we will solder the motor wires to our ESCs. Shazam! And now we have our motors connected on all, all four of them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to trim the motor wires, and we're going to attach them to the motor pads. Now you say, Adam, what's a motor pad? I don't know what a motor pad is. Well, let me show you what a motor pad is. It is nothing like a motor home, I will tell you that much. So these little guys right here, right there and there and there, those are where these three wires for this motor are gonna are gonna attach to. So they're gonna attach to those pads. And notice there's a four designation next to it. That means this is motor four. That doesn't really matter, but it will later once we're doing stuff in beta flight, or it might matter. Good to note anyway. 
these three pads right here are going to be for this motor and so on. So you can you can see the has the same situation over here on the on the opposite side of the board. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and that is where these wires go. Now you say, Adam, does it matter which order they are, which you know, which order they go, which wire connects to which? Um, well, what that's going to do is uh, basically no, it doesn't matter. So just solder them on, and then if later when when we test the motors and if it's spinning the wrong direction. Like if we want to change the direction, we can just re-solder and swap two of the wires and then it will spin the other direction. For now, don't worry about it um, and just solder them on and then we will take care of that later. And uh, we'll probably do it uh, by means of soldering, although there are other methods. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, th these are nice long wires, which is really great, but we don't really want the wires to be extra long because, um, well, you know, electrical efficiency things and then also just adds weight and it's just like why you know why bother plus it doesn't look as good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just kind of lay these flat along the arm here and kind of get an idea of how long they should be now of course i would rather have more you know i'd rather have extra motor wire than less but so i'm kind of looking at this and i'm like they're kind of going to go about probably something like that actually probably less even less for this one let me see here because this one's going to have to reach farther so really but again, I'd rather, I'd just rather, you know, I'd rather play it on the safe side. I'd reach out to right about there, about that far, I think. In fact, let's trim it and just see if we need to trim it more. So we'll get our snips here. We're going to trim this. And then we're going to strip the wires. And then we're going to tin them with our soldering iron. This one is almost too short or just long enough. Solder. I'm looking at this and I think I actually cut them maybe just a tad too short to reach this farthest one out here. But you know, that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. So don't do that. Cut them a little bit longer. And just for reference for your other motors, you might want to trim the wires, probably something more like this. So that this is the, this is the length of the wires. So this would go to the closest pad, the next farthest pad, and then the farthest pad over here from the from the motor so I think something something like that might work work out better but again it's better to have more wire than not enough wire now you might be looking at this and might be looking at this and going hey Adam um why are there why why are those shiny when mine are not if, if you are if you're this is your first time using this flight controller well that's because I have already soldered them so um, so what you're going to do is you're going to actually tin the solder pads as well. Watch out for that standoff because it is plastic and it will melt. Now, listen, if you're not super comfortable soldering um, kind of from this like sideways angle and, try and trying to get the soldering iron in there, you can uh, just loosen these or, you know, take off these little nuts that hold the the flight controller in place. Take off the nuts and the washers and stuff and then you can just get to this entire um, uh, board with all the ESCs um, and solder that way if if you if you want to so you can totally do that but um i'm not gonna do that all right let's solder these wires now i i'm looking at this and i think i actually cut them maybe just a tad too short to reach this farthest one out here but you know that's that's the way it goes sometimes so don't do that cut them a little bit longer um i guess that's there's a good example of a of a simple mistake you can make there so yeah that was totally intentional of me okay i'm just gonna solder that one right there okay and let's get this next one and i'm soldering left to right because i'm right-handed so that i don't have to go back over something that i soldered because you know and and touch it with my soldering iron all right so we're going to heat up this pad heat up the wire just kind of press them together and let them get there we go nice and melted nice and held together and let's get this one this one's gonna have to be this one's gonna be a little bit tight it's gonna have to be a little bit more of an angle a little bit more of a bend but that's that's the way it goes you know you make decisions you gotta live with them I gotta heat up my iron again hang on uh, we're gonna roll with it I think it's gonna it's still gonna work pretty that's pretty decent I think I think that'll do I think that'll do ladies and gentlemen so there you go that is uh, not the prettiest job for sure. Um, in fact, I think what I might do is is cut this one, the closest one, a little bit shorter uh, because there is quite a bit of slack. But uh, that is how we're going to attach these wires. 
how, how we're going to attach the wire, the motor wires and uh, just kind of route it around that little thing right there. That's pretty good. But again, you it's better to have more than less. Okay, so that's how you do that one motor. All the rest of the motors are exactly the same. Solder them to their respective motor uh, uh, pads right there. And uh, pause the video, and then I will meet you back here, and we'll have all four motors uh, soldered up. All right, and after you've soldered all the motor wires, it should look something like this. Hopefully a little bit prettier than than mine. Um, and then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to take a little piece of electrical tape and just tape down the wires on the arms uh, just to kind of keep things tidy. We don't need a whole lot of tape. It's just to kind of help hold things in place. And then we're going to move on to the next step. And that's going to do it for this segment of the build. Uh, I want to just break these videos up, make it a little bit more manageable for you and me. And so if you want to keep building, which I sure do, go hop over to the uh, next build video. I'll put a link to it right here somewhere or, or somewhere on the screen or this page or the description or something. You can go hop over there. We're going to uh, continue right where we left off in this build video. Uh, but before you do, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button or the thumbs down button if you were like, man, this guy's dumb. But I don't know why you'd say that. And uh, leave me a comment and uh, let me know what you thought of this build video. Again, this is my first build video, so I, I would appreciate your feedback and uh, let me know how it's going for you. And uh, yeah, so I will see you on the next video. Consider subscribing to this channel if you don't already. Thanks. See you. Bye.